Welcome to Self-Publishing Authors, home for candid talks and honest recommendations from book editing to book marketing, from author journeys to inspirations, hosted by Gurhan Demirkan. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking to Jenny Rosenblum. She is a fearsome editor and... Believe it or not, uh, she's been doing this for quite a while, uh, from east to west to south to north of America. So watch out. She's got some uh, stories and she's got some uh, know-hows and knowledges that she's going to share with us. Let's talk to her. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And we are back here with Jenny. And we're going to ask her some questions. We're going to drill her down as she is an editor. And as I indicated at the beginning, she's a fearsome editor. So. Let's just learn from her. Of course, my first question is, how did you become an editor? First, let's just start with that. Please introduce yourself and go into this uh, question. Okay, I'm Jenny Rosenblum uh, from here in Austin, Texas. And the road to editor was not a straight line. I went to business college and did technical editing when I got out um, and then life happened. <laughs> and so I took a tangent and raised my kids and started being a librarian. And about six years ago, I started looking for something that I could do on my own time. And I had already been editing for a couple friends who were authors and decided to take the leap and see if I could make this a full-time business. But I wanted to learn. And so I went into the indie book market and the indie authors. And I spent my first year learning. I went to every meeting, attended every webinar, talked to every author I could to figure out the business end of it because I didn't want to be suggesting things that would not help the author. Um, and then I went back to school <laughs> because technical editing is different. Um, you went back than, to the editing school. Yes. Uh, just taking some classes at night and weekends and things like that to get my skills back in shape. Um, got a few more people that I used as guinea pigs <laughs> and tested out my skills. Um, and some of them are still with me now, you know, 10 books later and they're still, we're still together. Awesome. Yes. So um, it was, it was a circular route to get here. Um but now I love it. I, I set my own hours. I work when I want, which means basically 14 hours a day, seven days a week. But it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so. Yeah. so when you were a librarian, mm -hmm. I always wonder about this. Uh, do you guys read a lot of books? Well, at the time, I was a children's librarian. So I read a ton of children's books. And if I got my hands on an adult book, it was a very big treat. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I read a ton of children's books. I'm still a member of the Texas Library Association. I still attend their yeah. conferences. They have a lot of great information and classes you can take with them. Um, and through that connection, I also have some connections with some traditional publishing houses to do reviews and things like that. Um, but yeah, I read an unknown number when it was children's books. Now I read about 200 to 250 books a year. So, oh, oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's enough. <laughs> well, I guess. <laughs> well, some of them more than once. When I'm editing, I usually, by the time I'm done editing a book, I've read it four times. Well, so. some, some people are glad they read like 250 pages, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So well, when you were, again, uh, will that help? Do you do any uh, children's uh, book editing? I do not. I found that that is not my forte. Um, I do have a couple people that I recommend um, that do a very nice job with publishing children's books. That is a different market. I can read it and give you a gut reaction and say, okay, yes, a librarian or you know someone doing story time is gonna love this. Um, or you need to change a few things to make it so that it's a better read aloud. Um, but, but the editing side, children's books are, are very subjective and it's hard to nail down that market. And I just don't feel like I've got the skills to yeah. do that. Yeah. So you're much more into the indie uh, publishers and you know yes. serious books, let's say. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> so uh, one thing I always wonder, you know, you're an editor and uh, take me for, uh, for instance, if I'm just mm -hmm. sending you an email, I'm like, oh, you know, she's an editor. You know, it's like, uh, she's going to look at my email. Let's just start, you know, putting those glasses on and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> start co correcting the email first, you know, you do uh that or... Uh, no, actually, I am a lot more forgiving for authors, but if I get something in my email box from a company or a professional and it's uh -huh. got typos, grammar, whatever, oh yeah, that drives me crazy. Or if I see something, <laughs> you know, uh, I saw a billboard recently when we were driving that had a misspelled word in it and that just... Oh. <laughs> sent me up the end. I, I, I needed to contact them and let them know. <laughs> they knew, they just hadn't paid to get it fixed. Um, but no, when it's an author, I figure a lot of them are very nervous. This is their baby that they're finally ready for somebody well, else to see. So I give them a lot of grace um, yeah. when we're starting out. Well, so what about uh, when you're writing an email? You watch all oh, these grammars and you know all these. And things. I use Grammarly and I read it backwards. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we know. <laughs> yeah, yes, I am. I am unless it's my friends and I'm just zipping something across. But I, I really do try to uh, be very cautious, um, yeah. especially with my tone. Emails are tough with tone. I'd much rather yes. do a phone yes. conversation. Yes, especially the mood that the other person is in, you know. And, uh, exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, can you actually tell the personality of the person who's sending you all these messages or emails? Just by sometimes the yes, sometimes no. Um, and it, I can also see how much research they've done on me. You know, have they have they looked at my social media pages and looked at my posts? And you know, every once in a while, I get someone who will joke with me in an email. Or um, I had a guy send me a book one time that was horror, and I don't read horror, um, uh -huh. but his email was so amusing on the reasons why I was limiting my world and I really needed to read him that I read his book. And I did a review oh. on it. And now I've beta read a couple of his books and edited one of his books. And he finds it hysterical that I still say, I don't read horror, but I work with him. <laughs> that's <like laughs> an exception to my role. <laughs> so. well, that's good though. Uh, yeah. So you start the, uh, another, another question. And these mm -hmm. are all personal questions. So you, you get this message. Let's say that this is the first message that you get from the uh, person. Uh, and he or she wants you to become an editor. And mm -hmm. uh, the email is full of uh, grammar errors and spelling errors. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Um, I respond back with my time frame because a lot of the times that will throw people off totally because my time frame runs about three months in advance. Okay. So if, if you want something now, you know, if you've finished your book and you're ready and you want it now, okay, that's not the real world, but good luck. And I do have people I can suggest. Um, but my first response is, okay, here, here is how I work. And I want to have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. I want to have a phone call. And I, some people are just writing because they need to get it out there. And just because their email is, I hate to use the word atrocious, but atrocious, um, does not mean their book will be. They might have a really great story that they're just having trouble developing. And then maybe I can just help them find either a class or oh. a process that might help get them out there. Um, I've got a couple memoir clients that they laugh that they write grocery lists well. <laughs> but they, we've been able to get their stories out there. We've been able to get it developed for their process, they wanted it for their families. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh -huh. It needs to be readable. And, readable. and we can get it there. You know, a lot or of it depends. Words, on... Go ahead. In other words, without seeing the book, just, just by looking at the email, you don't prejudge the book. No, no, because okay. the, the voice is very different. Um, I've heard authors speak that are fabulous and their books are awful. And I've heard authors who can't put two words together and their books are fabulous. So, you know, you just don't know. So. Okay, just, just 
we just wanted to know. That's all. <laughs> when we're sending you an email, you know, you just have to be careful. <laughs> yes, yes. I would appreciate the, some effort. Um, yes. And and I don't appreciate when I get a book that's completely done and they just want me to review it and it's full of typos and grammar and I just oh. say no. Go back and you know hire someone. Do get somebody else to proofread. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, your time is your time, you know, so mm -hmm. you're not going to sit down and just correct things. <laughs> right. right. Yes. So, I've done that. Uh, <laughs> but not anymore. You always do that anyway, <laughs> but they have to pay you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so any types of books that you specialize in? Um, I've found a very nice niche in historical fiction and oddly enough, paranormal which is not something I read. It's not something I usually pick up, but I've gotten a nice little collection of authors who have turned me over to the dark side. And I find that a lot of them are fun and I really like fun. I like cozy mysteries. Um, I will do nonfiction, but only if it's something that I have knowledge of. Um, like I said, I don't do horror. I don't do erotica. Um, but pretty much anything else, if it's a good story and good characters, I'm sold. That that's all I need, and and I, it doesn't matter what the genre is. Oh, so. okay. So you actually kind of look at the book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. If you like it, yes, it's good. But if you don't like it, not good. Right. Yeah. I think we we limit ourselves when we just say, you know, I only read science fiction. Well. Yeah. There's a lot of bad science fiction. There's a lot of good science fiction. And, you know, a good story in science fiction could also be, you know, put those characters in a different story. They could be just as good. Yeah, so. yep. definitely. That's what, yep. uh, uh, what's called uh, Disney does. Yes. Yeah. You know, exactly. They cost up to do that. <laughs> yes. It's a princess. I can go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden you see the Disney princess, uh, you know, showing up in Marvel. Marvel yeah. uh, yeah. story. You know, I was like, oh, yeah. what's up with that? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that's okay. So uh, your editorial style, what is it? How is it? It's one, one, one author had told me that it's folksy. And what she meant was, I like to get to know the people. You know, I like to, if possible, sit down and have tea with them, um, have a conversation with them figure out where this story's coming from. So I'm very curious. I, I'm always asking questions. Um, so I like a hands-on. I like somebody I can communicate with. I like somebody that will sit down with me for 30 minutes and go through a quick life story, where the book came from, where they want it to go, um, and be realistic. Because you're not okay. going to be the next John Grisham. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> that 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 work nice. hard at it. Yes, yes. Uh, so I'm a very hands-on. I have a lot of authors that only deal with me over the phone. I have others I've never talked to on the phone, but we've emailed back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, I I do like hands-on. I like to know the person. I like to know the story. Oh, so you'd like to get involved, actually. I do. I do. And most of my authors have, have uh, are repeats, okay. you know, so, um, and a couple of them have become friends. Oh, We've just nice. worked together for so long and we know each other's style now. And, uh -huh. you know, and, and I like the, the phone call at 8 a.m. that I get from my one author in New York and, and she's already up and working and she thought of this great idea and what do I think? And, <laughs> and that kind of makes my day, you know, I get started. And, yeah. yeah. Well, it's eight o'clock over there was seven o'clock over here. Yeah. I am thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm usually up at that point. I'm more an uh, early bird than a night owl. So. Okay, cool. And uh, what about your services? Uh, what type of editorial services do you provide? Like development? Oh, I do. I do anything from a beta read, which I do charge for. Um, uh -huh. I know there's a lot of free beta reads you can get out there, but my beta read is much more intense. Um, okay. You know, there's not good development. This story needs to evolve more. This character needs to evolve. That kind of okay. thing. Um, then I also ordered, offer just a plain proofreading. 
story's done, it's been edited, but you feel like something might not quite be there, um, I will do a proofreading. And my proofreading always includes things like, okay, yeah, this character never, never got to where you wanted it to get to. Um, as far as a full edit, I do developmental edit. I do line editing. Um, I am not... I am not a mechanical editor. I am not a nonfiction editor in that I will check your references and things like that. I am much more developmental. Developmental. Uh, yeah. Like structural copy editing, line editing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so what I'm hearing when you're doing your uh, developmental editing, you're actually doing just about anything. Just putting your, you know, everything Pretty much. in there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't joking when I said I read a book four times before I give it back to you. I, I go through gut reaction and then I go through a developmental edit. Do all the mm -hmm. eyes go in the right place and the, you know, is everything where it should be going? And then I do a line edit and then I read once more through just for, okay, yes, I've now thought about this. I've slept on it. This is, this is, all my suggestions that I, I think would help. Because I look at it also as marketable. Of you course, know, you can, yeah. Well, you can that's a great thing. story, <laughs> but if the market's not going to handle it, then, uh, then you need to decide if you're writing for you or the market. Yes, yes. Um, so you said uh, 250 books. Now you say if you read a book four times, that's about... That doesn't uh, count. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. That doesn't count. <laughs> Yes, and this is all my this is all my to be read piles too. So you know, oh. I've, got, I've got personal <laughs> books. So, <laughs> so uh, you made a comment. You said the marketability of the book. Mm -hmm. So let's just forget about editing or something like that. Somebody yeah. sends you a book and says, "Hey, Jenny, can you read this and give me your opinion? You know, if it's uh, okay to you know just keep going with this book, or mm -hmm. we need to stop or change it or whatever." You mm -hmm. do that. Yes. Um, and I, I have clients that decide they want to change genre. You know, they've been writing a mystery series and suddenly they have this idea for a sci-fi book. Um, and so we will work together. I have authors who will send me a couple chapters as they write them. Um, then I only charge them for my time, which mm -hmm. you know, an hour here or there. Um, but I don't really... I don't give away that service. I'm, saying, I'm trying to find a nice way to say that. Um, <laughs> if you want me for gut reaction, then you need a beta read. You need to, you need to yeah. give me an idea. And, and I, then I will follow that up with, you know, I give everybody 30 minutes on Zoom or phone call or whatever. Pick my brain. I'll tell you what I know about the market. I've been doing this full time for six years. Um, I have, I have one publishing person who calls me the Kevin Bacon of independent authors, uh, meaning, you know, Kevin Bacon knows everybody six degrees. I, I've been out there. I figured out some not so great things that you need to avoid and things mm -hmm. that will work. I don't take any compensation from anything I recommend. I don't work that way, but mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of good, reputable organizations out there that can help you market and develop a publishing plan, um, right. it's finding them. Okay, yeah. You're a nice person. I try. <laughs> I try. <laughs> somebody, you know, somebody that everybody should know. <laughs> <laughs> I do try. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you, you already mentioned about your, uh, your preferred uh, book genre. You mm -hmm. don't do horror, uh, you don't do uh, children's books, right? No, no, and I don't do erotica. Erotica, yes. Okay. I oh, will do... Your, your husband gets mad at you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I will. I did. I have one author that I did a couple eroticas for her, and I'm just not good at it. Yeah. You know, romance, romance is different. And I can even do hot and heavy romance. But when you get into erotica, that's a very specialized genre. You need somebody yeah. who knows that market well. Of course. And, yes. and I'm just not that person. So in other words, you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. 
Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. I just moved to Texas. I'm learning these things. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you get uh, all these authors coming to you. What is a good time for an author to start working with you, you know, as an editor? Uh, before they're done beta reading. So if you have so, a finished product and you're you're about ready to send it out to friends or family or you know someone you trust to read it through it's also a good time to start looking for an editor okay so start what interviewing. About when when i have an idea mm -hmm. and uh, i always thought that that would be a better time to start working with an editor yes no when, yes and i have a couple authors i work with like that mm -hmm but you need to know your editor first. So okay. that's, that's more of a comfort level. That's somebody that's already got experience. Um, if you're looking for writing coaching, there's a lot of great organizations out there that can help you with that to develop uh -huh. your story. Writers League of Texas does a fabulous job, um, as well as the other writer leagues in other states that's where you want to start with your story idea and get it developed and take some classes. This is not, this is not something everybody just picks up, learn your okay. skill, you know, go, go take that class on plot development, go take that class on dialogue. Just because you have an idea doesn't mean you're going to be able to get it into a book um, without having some of the skills yeah. that are necessary. So why pay me money to tell you <laughs> Oh. But you didn't develop your dialogue when you could have taken an online class for a hundred dollars and developed it yourself. So. <laughs> <laughs> you cost more, actually. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, so, I hope so, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, my, don't tell my husband that I'm telling people to uh, <laughs> not pay me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. We haven't met uh, your husband yet, but uh, <laughs> maybe one of these days we'll meet her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you said you did do beta, beta reading, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I remember that correctly? Yes. And yeah. uh, when you're doing your beta reading, you said it was much more intense than just regular beta reading. It's uh, you also look at the marketability and mm -hmm. uh, anything else that you look at? And development, time? general development. Um, okay. I, I get from a lot of authors, I hear things like, oh, I sent this to my Aunt Margaret, and she read it, and she said she loved the characters, so therefore everything's perfect. And then I read it, and I say, why do your characters seem to be different ages at different times when the time period stays the same? And you know, I'm looking <laughs> more at that. Um, I'm looking at the, okay, everybody has the same voice. Why does everyone have the same voice in this story? Yes, it was well written. Yes, your grammar is correct. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry, the English professor and the street girl are not going to talk the same way. And so, yeah. so that's what I'm looking at is, is a, deeper, a deeper dive into the book. Yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, the, uh, uh, the flow of the uh, book, I guess you look mm -hmm. at that too. Yes. Yeah. Does it seem feasible? Does the yeah. storyline develop in a way that someone reading it is going to be able to follow it and understand it? Yeah, that's actually good for uh, guys. You know, <laughs> we have a hard time following things. Only directions. Clear. Only directions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we need directions. <laughs> well, if it's not instructions on a paper, you're fine. Yes. <laughs> Well, these are actually my questions. Uh, would you like to add uh, more, you know, about editing and what uh, uh, the authors should, should start with? Uh, some recommendations I, to the authors? I really would start with, if you say you want to write a book, mm -hmm. take some classes, take some courses on writing, save yourself a lot of heartache um, by learning the skill, because it really is a skill to be able to develop stories and characters. So develop your skill, learn what you need to know to produce a product that can then go out into the world. So that would be the first thing. Join the organizations. 
I know that some people like to go on social media and chat and they think that, you know, hashtag writing community on Twitter is going to answer all their questions. And yeah, that's a great place to connect with other people who are doing what you're doing, Mm -hmm. but it's not where you want to go to learn a skill or market your book. So figure that out first. I got a question. Yeah. Um, you're you're telling them to go take a couple of you know take a couple of courses and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, of mm-hmm. course, everybody learns in you know within a different time frame. How how long are these courses? Some of them are short. It could be a one day class that's being offered on story development or character development. Some of them that are run through some organizations or weekends or you know two times a week for a month. Uh, you, okay. if you really want to do it, their community college have great creative writing that you can usually just go in and pick and choose and take some classes. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's enough organizations out there that are offering seminars and webinars and all that kind of stuff. Take advantage of them, especially when COVID hit. Suddenly, the big publishers and everybody was doing webinars and seminars and conferences went online and you know, that thousand dollar conference was suddenly only $120 and yes. you could take a bunch of classes. So yes. do that, take advantage of that. You have to realize you're investing. If you really, this is starting your own business mm-hmm. by being an author yes. and you need to be ready to invest, not just your time, but it is going to cost. There, so, there is well, well cost. cost is one thing, but uh, what you're saying is this is not like, Hey, before you start writing, you should take courses for a year, you know, no. to be ready. Yeah, I mean, no. uh, of course, you have to invest in yourself. Maybe six months, maybe four months, maybe two months. Mm-hmm. That's right. what you're saying. So we need yes. to make that clear. So when you say take a course, uh, sometimes people just think, "Well, I'm just going to go to school now for a year." You know, no, so, right? Yeah, no. No, take, take advantage of a lot of things that are out there because frankly, a lot of these classes that are one day or a couple nights or whatever, oh. they're condensing everything that you're going to get in a semester of college. So hit the high spots, do the, mm-hmm. do the one day, figure out, attend a conference, attend some of the writers conference, see what else is out there. What does the market bear? What resources are there? Know your strengths. You know, I have, I have authors that they just know they're good at writing the story and they do nothing else. They hire somebody for every other aspect. And then I have other authors who do a hundred percent themselves. They've learned the business. They've taken the time. They've learned how to do graphic art to do their cover. It, it has nice. become a second job for them. Yeah. So. Nice. Yes. I belong to uh, some of the Facebook groups, 20 mm-hmm. books. I forgot the name of it now. They are very famous. Mm-hmm. These, these people are incredible. They are. Mm-hmm. It's their job. Yes. And uh, I, every time somebody posts something, you know, everybody rushes to read. You know, it's like, okay, yes. what do I learn from this? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, well, that's all my questions, actually. And okay. uh, anything else you'd like to add? No, just give me a yell, shoot me an email. I'm always willing to answer questions. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty much as you find me. So if I, if I think it's a really bad story, I'm going to tell you it's a really bad story. Or I'm going to say, hey, you know, I think we've got something to work with, but you need to adjust a few things. And, it's, and okay. another thing that's very important is every editor is only giving you their opinion. Yes. So as the author, this is your baby. I am merely here to put a pretty dress on it. So you, this is your choices. Everything I do is a suggestion, in my opinion, take it with a grain of salt and do what you want because it's yours. It's your project. So I should actually change the, uh, uh, the introduction that I shot before we started. I made you look really scary and, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh gosh, no, no, yeah. Even even my kids will tell you no. That that was that was my, that was dad, not mom. Mom, yeah. Dad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna turn off this. Welcome to self-publishing authors. 
home for candid talks and honest recommendations from book editing to book marketing, from author journeys to inspirations. Hosted by Gurhan Demirkan. 